If you only have 24 hours or lay over in Seattle, be sure to stick around so you see some of the best hidden gems as well as other things to do in Seattle in a day that will absolutely share the magic of the Emerald City. This was the last stop on my Alaska adventure and was a last minute but rewarding addition to my trip with a layover with Alaska Air. If you don't know me already, my name is Sarah, an adventure travel vlogger aiming to visit all 50 states in 100 countries. So far I'm at State 43 after visiting Washington. Subscribe and follow so you don't miss the adventure. Hello from Seattle. We're in the center of it all, honestly, and I'm so excited because I actually got to change my flight for 50 bucks with Alaska Air, and now I am here in Seattle on this beautiful sunny day, about to check into a hostel located right here in downtown, and yeah, take you along with me in 24 hours in Seattle. Let's see this. A overnight layover and wanting a place to rest my head for the night, I checked into the Green Tortoise Hostel, perfect for solo travelers, and the location for $50 a night before heading to Pike Place Market. Alright guys, we're here in Seattle. I just made it. I'm here for 24 hours going around Pike Place Market as well as just trying to see as much as I can see in less than 24 hours. But yeah, this is so exciting. I've always wanted to come to Washington and now this is my 43rd day. Nuts. So right now we're inside Pike's Place Market. I just saw them do this catch of fish thing, which is pretty cool. Definitely need to go back for that. But currently I'm in search for chowder because I heard this place has the best chowder here in Pike's Place. Pike's Place chowder. So let's go find it now. Oh, and we found Pike's Place chowder. I don't know how I'm gonna eat all this, but what'd you get? The regular New England chowder, and my mom's from New England, so I'm really wondering if it really is gonna be better, you know? Mm. Alright, it's good. Oyster crackers from New England. You want these? All right guys, I'm in Seattle, and you know what that means. I had to come to Pike Place Market, and not only Pike Place Market, Pike Place Chowder to get some chowder, and I heard their New England chowder was fire. I decided to get it in a bread bowl. Let me tell you, it's $19 once I left the tip and everything, and it is super huge. It's like the size of a medium, so let me know in the comments if you think it's worth it. I had to get it because I'm here in Pike Place, and I'm only here for 24 hours. But I can tell you it's worth it. If you're here for 24 hours, definitely stop by here. I don't know how to eat this because it they have it overfilling. <laughs> but after this, I think I'm gonna walk through a little more of the market. And then we're near literally the oldest Starbucks ever. And I need to pick me up because I woke up extremely early and we're gonna have a blast exploring Seattle in 24 hours. But for now I'm gonna dig in because I need to get all the nutrients I need to explore this city. So I wanted to come to the original Starbucks. Oh my God, look at the line. Oh. We're here in front of the oldest and original Starbucks. It really has the original sign as well. You can see Starbucks, coffee, teas, and spices. And it's located in Pike's Place Market. Definitely doable. Are you okay if I tell you everything out here so you can do me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we only have one line and it's going to be on the right hand side over here. Okay. And then all this wall is going to be full of our displayed items. What are your display items? Oh, uh, this whole entire thing. Like, you know, like displayed items like our cups and our merchandise okay, and stuff cool. like that. And, but it's all going to be for display, so we just ask that you don't bring it back to us. We'll give you brand new items of each and everything. All right, got it. On the right hand. Thank you so much. Go ahead, whatever you want. All right. Ready. How many visitors do you get? It's about 100 visitors per hour. Wow. And from 7 to 7. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, time to go into the oldest Starbucks. Wow. One line to order. First Starbucks has unique drinks you can order as well as gifts that you can bring home with you. Yeah. Alright guys, I got my drink and I even bought a little souvenir for a home at the first Starbucks location ever. You can even see the original sign. Thank you. And now we can go explore Pike's Place. So it seems like Pike's Place shuts down around like 4.35. And then, yeah, 
come early. If you want to see them throwing fish, that was pretty cool. But I love that. The place I'm staying is literally right here on this corner. The green tortoise. So this is really good. Now just taking a walk along the waterfront, I see the wheel ahead. All right guys, so just heading into Pioneer Square, which is the oldest neighborhood in Seattle. And you can actually do these underground tours because there's passageways underneath the city of Seattle from like the 1890s. And one of the tours leaves from over here, I think beneath the street, across the street over there. They were sold out today and they're about 75 minute tours that go underground. But basically, yeah, I just don't have a ton of time here, but I'm sure it's good and worth a visit down underneath the streets of Seattle and get a history that is often not seen because it lies below. But for now, I just wanted to walk around Pioneer Square. Here you can see there's shops, coffee shops, and also there's Smith Tower here, which you can have one of the best sunsets in town. It used to be one of the tallest skyscrapers in the US, and now it is just a beautiful old historic building right here in Seattle. But yeah, you can see things are a little bit more historic over here. Okay, so saw Pioneer Park, walked around a little bit. It's pretty small and you see the Smith Tower. But I also saw the oldest restaurant in Seattle. But now I wanna try to head to the ferry terminal so I can see Seattle from the water. The Baines Bridge Ferry from Seattle and back again to get a little cool view of the city from the water. And probably for not that much money, I don't know yet how much, but we'll find that out and I'll let you know. So now we're going on the Baines Bridge Ferry round trip is $9.45. If you're under 18, it's free. Uh, <laughs> the guy had a little funny joke. He's like, are you over 18? I'm over 30, so we have that. But hopefully we'll get some good views and it's such a beautiful day right now. Yes, it's at 5.45 p.m. So I thought I'd hop right on because it was close to Pioneer Park. I'm gonna let the sun shine in today. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking. So we're inside the ferry now. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my god, so there's food on this ferry. There's also a sun deck, a car deck, and yeah, crazy. Starts to fade, feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. It was a sad day. I got some popcorn and it all fell. But what's not sad is this view of Seattle. <laughs> I dropped all the popcorn. <laughs> I can't take myself out anywhere. This is by far literally the best deal you could have. Nine dollars forty-five cents for the trip to see the view of Seattle, and then you can block yourself from the one over here. Whoa. So cool. Okay, this, if you have 24 hours in Seattle, you must take the Baines Bridge Islands Ferry from Seattle. Not only is it beautiful when you get here, but the ride over is 35 minutes long. Each way is 35 minutes. And not only that, you get to have amazing views of Seattle. And not just Seattle, but beyond this little area, you can see Mount Rainier and it was totally clear i got some video of it as well but yes this is just so epic when i woke up this morning i never thought i would be experiencing this right now and it is amazing so i had to disembark and reboard because of like code, no from 9 11 protocols so here's the boarding area from fans bridge oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so i can fly
After the ferry, I headed to the hostel where they were having an ice cream social before going to catch sunset at the Space Needle in Seattle. Okay, cutting it close for sunset just a little bit. It sunsets at 845, 8.45. It's like 8.26. And there's a bit of a line to get up to the dock. But at least maybe we'll get twilight too. But it looks super pretty today. Alright guys, so as you can see, it is super busy here on the top of the Space Needle for Sunset. This is so cool. That got me dizzy, but check the bottom out. One last thing to do here is the glass floor. I almost forgot while I was taking a time lapse. All right, just finished going all the way up there. That was so awesome. Now just gonna try to find some food and then head to the hostel in bed. This has been an amazing day and so unexpected, but glad that I've been able to come to Washington, a state I've never been to before, and add it on to my trip to Alaska. From the Space Needle, I found Tavern Five Point, where I got an epic burger at this iconic joint. I woke up early to come to the Starbucks Reserve Roastery, after yesterday going to the oldest Starbucks, it was so busy. I wanted to get here nice and early, so here we are. I've been to the one in Chicago, and I have to come to this one, of course. Seattle is basically the home of American cafe culture, and what better way to celebrate that than visit the first Starbucks roastery where you can try unique menu items, freshly baked artisan bread, and see where they roast single origin coffee in the roasters. They also have a bar and have classes as well as tastings. People may hate Starbucks, but I love it because I started this blog and vlog from a Starbucks cafe. So Starbucks will always hold a special place in my heart. We nitro and still, still we've done nothing to it. Nitro, we have added nitrogen gas, so it serves like a beer, not alcoholic, but that foaminess yeah. aspect. That's okay. what we're after, because we trick your brain into thinking that it's creamy, so it, it fills in the blanks. So if it feels creaminess and doesn't taste it, it makes you taste a little bit of creaminess. Whereas, with the still, you just like just get the flavors of the cold beer, which are still amazing, but here there's an added bonus plus. Alright, so I'm trying the single origin pop from Papua New Guinea, Moanti. So you can get the terroir flavor of the place, which is super cool. And the guy said the nitro one gives you this like creaminess, and also the nitro one opens up your capillaries, so the caffeine hits you quicker. Mm. This is good. I'm in my coffee heaven right now, and I also tried the hazelnut Bianco, which was very yummy and smooth. Plus, you get this like awesome vibe of they're roasting all the coffee beans around you. 
Biz keeps talking about where the coffee is coming from up there. And the staff here is really, really nice. They do tastings here, they do tours as well. Okay, so there are six Starbucks roasteries around the world. One in Seattle, the first one. One in Chicago, then another one in New York City. And three abroad, one in Milano, Tokyo, and Shanghai. So definitely pretty cool. I've now been to two of the three. I don't think I went to the one in New York yet. That's the newest one. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You can do these like tasting experiences. They have a bar where they infuse it with alcohol. I don't drink, so yeah, to me, I'm at the main coffee bar. Plus, look at this. Next, I rented a bike through an app and hopped to my next adventure. I was just heading to the Amazon Spirits, which is actually the headquarters of Amazon. I took the Lime scooter, I rented through the Uber app just to get around a little bit quicker right now because I don't have a ton of time left here in Seattle. This is a 24 hour jaunt, but I want to check this out and then go to the Seattle Central Public Library. I don't know what was going on there, but this is Amazon Spears and they've done rainforest. Inside there's like a rainforest, they open it on like the first Saturday of every month. But now I'm just going to head to the Central Library and hopefully it opens at 10 a.m. It looks really cool. It was opened in, I think, 2004. <laughs> so let's head there now. This is pretty cool. They have bike lanes here and it makes it so easy to get around, honestly. And quicker than walking. Especially if you're a tourist and you're just trying to see Seattle in 24 hours. I love this way of getting around by Lime Bike, or they also have scooters too. Next, I headed to the Central Library in Seattle, which is basically a piece of art in itself. I've never seen anything like it. Honestly, it's like a contemporary art piece in itself. After visiting the library, there was one more iconic stop I had to go see. But first, I had to buy some bubble gum. All right guys, my time in Seattle is coming to a close, but I'm just heading to the Bubblegum Mall, which is right near the public market place. And yeah, very excited. But first, got to chew my bubblegum before we can stick it on the wall. If anything speaks to the eclectic and unique nature of Seattle, it has to be the Bubblegum Mall because it's been going on since the 90s when people were waiting in line for an improv show, they would just start sticking their bubblegum on the wall. Alright guys, so we're here at the bubblegum wall and this place is kind of disgusting and cool at the same time. But people just keep adding a lot of gum on the wall here. I can't even blow a bubblegum bubble, but here we go. There we go. And this bee is thing it right here. Oh no, oh no, gum deck. Alright, time to go. I have to check it out. But it's been lovely here in Seattle. This place got really busy really quick. And now it's time to head out. Before heading to the airport, I headed to get a bite to eat and see the fish throw one last time. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 TJ for Japan! That was super cool, girl fish throwers. And yeah, I got some fish on my camera, but whatever, it was worth it. But this is so beautiful. Okay, so next up is Piroshki. Piroshki, I heard it's a good big cake. Okay, no, 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 and okay. we're right there. Oh my God, there's a line. I don't know if I have time to wait. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. All right guys, I went to Piroshki Piroshki. I was recommended to get the salmon pate. They've been open since 1992 and they said they're known for this. And yeah, I had to get it and try it. But let's dig right in, but after I take a photo. <laughs> All right guys, this salmon pate is so delicious. As you can see, there's so much salmon there and they made it like a fish tail. Having this while you're in the Pike Place market is so good. Mm. 
but yeah, I have to rush out. I might go get a coffee. I go to Ali Espresso real quick. And then we're out of here. Out of Seattle, 24 hours. It's been amazing. And now back. heading back home to Orlando. But I'm 100% coming back here. Hope this helped you figure out how to have an epic layover in Seattle. All right guys, so heading to the airport. I am hot, overheated and everything. So I think I'll make it. I also reserved a time for the security checkpoint. I was able to do that online. So that's at 1 p.m. and I'm literally arriving at like 12.55 to the airport. And that allows me to go to the security checkpoint that's right near my gate. So crossing my fingers, I won't have to deal with long lines. I did get off at my layover and they said my bag was going onwards. So hopefully that is the case. Otherwise, yeah, my bag would be stuck in Seattle. I don't know, I'll check when I'm at the airport. But for now, tried the Ghost Alley coffee. It's giving me life right now and keeping me cool. It's about a 35, 36 minute ride from the University Street stop to the Seattle Tacoma Airport. And yeah, it's pretty easy. It's $3 each way, $6 round trip. And it made it really easy for me to see Seattle in 24 hours. If this video has helped you for seeing what a layover in Seattle is like, then please subscribe. And as always, leave a comment if you have any questions and like this so more people can find it and it can help them too. Thanks and have a good day. And my top tip is when you're heading back, be sure to grab a window seat because you will get such an amazing view if there's a clear weather day of Mount Rainier. Hope this video helps you plan your 24 hours in Seattle. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And as always, hit subscribe so you don't miss a beat on the next adventure.